CSS way too much. I mean, people think I'm weird, but I love it. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about CSS shapes, transitions, um, transforms. It's the fun stuff that you don't normally get to see. Can you hear me okay back there? <clears throat> First, I want to talk about the basic CSS shapes, like circle, square, rectangle, ovals. They're the easiest to make. The background color is due to the background uh, <clears throat> of inside of it, not the border of itself. Where others are drawn, like triangles are drawn by the border. I'll show you. <clears throat> so if you take a circle, to make it, you have equal height and width, and then you have a border radius of 50%. So you can do uh, 100 pixels in this case, but the cheat is to do 50%, and it works every time. Um, if you go over 50%, it doesn't have any more effect, only when you go under 50%. So this is how they make those circles for certain web pages with images, it's just uh, the border radius on an image tag. This is almost exactly the same CSS. Next, we'll move on to square, which is pretty much the same height and width. Um, it's the easiest shape. Everything on the web is pretty much a square, rectangle. Um, where rectangles are, you know, one of them's wider or higher than the other. <clears throat> um, oval is a combination of circle and rectangle, where you do use the border radius to be 50%. Uh, In this case, 50% of 100 is 50, 50% 50 of uh, 200 is 100, but the cheat is just to do Border, the trick is just to do border radius 50%. Those are the easy ones, easy to understand ones. Next, these are all drawn, the triangles, the trapezoid, and star, which is just two triangles anyways. <clears throat> They're drawn using borders. So for example, for triangle up, there's no pixel width or height. By the way, all this will be, uh, I have working code that you guys can look at, and I'll give you my slides as well. <clears throat> but as you can see, the border left and the border right are transparent, but the border bottom, the one coming up, is, uh, has the color. So if you want to look at it this way, if we change the transparent to white, that's the way it looks like. It's sort of like three triangles. Um, likewise, triangle down, you're going, the main part of it's in the top facing down. <clears throat> so the other two are transparent, and then the top is the color. And if we want to move it to the right, all the color, the main, main amount of color is on the left-hand side, and then the other two are transparent, the top and the bottom. And what would happen with the left? Anybody, anybody? What's that? Same thing, except it's the left. All right. The left, the border right has the color going towards the left. And then the top and bottom are transparent. <clears throat> so what happens if you want to have a triangle that's on the top left? So you, if you would, um, if both of these would have colors, it would look like that. But you're making the bottom one transparent. And so, since it's coming top to bottom, um, that's, the way, that's the way it looks. Does anybody have a question about that? <laughs> I see some. I, my brain. What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Pause, pause, pause. I just want to admire this for a second. What is going on? So, you know, the blue color is the one you want, right? And so the main stuff's coming from the top down. So the border top is um, the blue, and then the border bottom is the white. But if when you make it transparent, it looks like that. Okay. 
Do you have a question? It's, it's kind of crazy. I, I, I kind of do, because, I mean, obviously, the, the, the logical thing that would happen is not that. It would be... You, you would think it was, like, one level, then one level, but that's what's not it, how it works. What's making it, what's making it offset? Is there, like, some quantum thing happening? The I guess you got to think of it... <laughs> you got to think of it as a square. But in, I guess in a way that it comes down this way and then up that way. So with height, we have a point. Right. Sort of. um, then the top order is 100 pixels. Right. Which is the height of the box. Right. It's from top to bottom and the other one's from bottom to and top. order right is 100 pixels. OK. So basically, CSS. Hurts itself and that happens. But you could use it for really cool things. Um, but maybe maybe we continue around the four corners, right. the right one. The blue is coming from the top again, and the left is coming um, from the bottom. And let me look at that for a second. Right. Where the, the blue one is whatever the it starts at, so in this case, the bottom is coming up, it's blue, no, the bottom, sorry. The thickest part, top, is coming down. Does that make sense? It gets confusing, I guess. But if we were to go from the bottom left, <clears throat> it's, um, I don't know if I can move. So this would be the bottom, and then that would be the top. This is transparent, I mean the right. So see, it's coming from the right side. Let's find out. Let's find out. Does it work in IE? Yes, this all works in all the browsers. <laughs> Lower resolution. Come on. Let me try and move this over here for a second. It won't let me move it down. Here we go. Can you see that? Come on. All right. So this one is, the, it comes starts on the right with the, the transparent. Let's see, Porter right. Now you have me all messed up. <laughs> if I cancel that. I switched it to the left. I switched it to right. And it gets really fun. I'm trying to figure out how to explain this better. It does, but it's trial and error in this, in this case. Cool. Really cool. Yeah. And then you end up with the four corners. I'll put more in my notes about that. <clears throat> okay. So we almost drew this in, when I was doing the live thing, the trapezoid. The ends taper in from the, the left and the right. 
border comes from the bottom. When I was messing with it and I put a border left in, that's just almost what it was ended up looking like. <clears throat> and you know how we had the triangle going up? We could have the triangle going down. Do you guys understand before and after? Uh, pseudo. So before and after means I'm putting some element before the div and I'm putting some element after the div that wasn't there. It doesn't work for accessibility, but it works for fancy fancy stars and stuff like that. <clears throat> so you take and you <clears throat> so this is how you build the, the, the first one, just like you build a normal star. <clears throat> Border bottom, it's coming up, you know, it's that way. And then this is after it draws it border down, like border top, the trait coming down that way. And we use positions on this, and then we move it over on top of each other with the position. Does that make sense? As much as anything you've said so far. All right, but you move this over negative 50 pixels and um, so the more interesting stuff. The, 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 with the before and after, um, you, your star six is relative and then your, your star six after is its position absolute is relative to the star six. Right. Absolute. Right. You have to send them both. They both have to have positions. It's kind of like it's kind of like a relative absolute. Okay, cool. Absolute to the relative. <clears throat> All right. Now we have some of those basic things. We can do these fun things: make a talk bubble, Pac-Man, Yin Yang. <clears throat> So the talk bubble is pretty easy to do because we already know how to make the square with border radius, right? You guys all know how to do that. You set a border radius of like 10, and then we make that triangle to the, going to the left, and then we pull it over. This is the padding for the words. <clears throat> you know, it's a rectangle. And then uh, the background color is, of course, in there. Now we make the triangle over here. <clears throat> it's a left one, so it comes from the right-hand side. Most of it's on the right-hand side. And then these two are transparent, just like we did originally here. <clears throat> and then a position absolute. What is what? Well, you put content in there, it's empty. But if I put a word in there, a word would go inside of there. And the big reason you would use that for a before is, so you're making a print style sheet and you want to, every link, you want to put the actual URL. You grab the attribute of the URL and you put it in there inside brackets so the print people know where the URL was. That's one of the cool things for that. So let's make a Pac-Man. <clears throat> this one uses border radius to make the circle. And then uh, we come from the left. Let's see. Yeah, the, the, the border right's transparent. So if you thought of this as a square instead of a circle, I could show this to you. Can you guys see this okay? So if I take away border radius, <clears throat> it's just a square with the right side. I mean, the left would be border left, right? Let's see here. No, it's not showing up. I had made it all one thing. 
the, the editor made it all one thing. I'll show you the code, which is This is a little bit uh, small. Sorry. So the border right is, is the one that's transparent, and then the other borders have colors on them. So that's how this ends up. And then you just border radius it, and it's a circle, and then you have Pac-Man. Waka waka. <clears throat> yeah, there's a code. Um, and then we want to go crazy and make yin yang. <laughs> so this one's a little more interesting. Um, so I tried to break it up and this is like the first drawing of it. And this is combined there and I added a green so you can see things better. <clears throat> so you make the border, you know, you have border radius of 100%. I don't know if you can hear me. And then, uh, <clears throat> see the border is 100%. And the border color is a blue, but the background is white. And so it ends up looking like that, believe it or not. But the, yeah, the border radius in there. This one's before and after. Before we take and we put in a blue on the outside border with a white on the inside <clears throat> and the width being 12 pixels. And then um, we go halfway up with the 50% position absolute. We need the content thing because it won't fill in the color if there's nothing in it. So you need to put content, uh, empty space. Likewise, here's the white <clears throat> border with the background color of blue. It's reversed. And then it ends up looking like that, which is pretty cool. Next, we're going to get into CSS transforms, which, which gets into skew and scale, rotate and translate. This is where the magic, this magic happens. So to make a rectangle, you just got to skew it. So let me show you. Th these are the real things and that you'll be able to get which is a slightly bigger. So here you have a rectangle. <clears throat> here you have the rectangle. And it's skewed. The problem with skewed, and it's really cool, you could do navigation items up top, have little folders or whatever. The problem is it, the words inside it are skewed. So what you have to do is you have to put a div inside of it. And I put a hover to change the skew to be the opposite side. <clears throat> so to make this font work, no matter what, you then uh, you have to put another div inside of it or span and go exact opposite the skew that's live. So. <clears throat> So the skew was 20, this is negative 20 degrees. So it straightens it back out. And then on the hover, they switch. It's a negative 20 and a positive 20 degrees. Um, the only reason I can see you using this is fancy stuff, but menuing is probably pretty cool for that to be used. <clears throat> So I'm just using the x-axis, and I'm going 20 degrees. <clears throat> and then on hover, I'm switching it to negative 20 degrees, and it just flips it back and forth. <clears throat> so we get into scaling. <clears throat> so when 
I have it on, I'm going to show you the code in a second. When I hover over these, they're going to scale 1.2 times on hover. Need a So we used to the higher resolution screens these days. All right. <clears throat> you have to be aware of the surroundings because if you go too big, it will over, you know, go over top of words. But in the heart, here's the heart. <clears throat> All right. So let's talk about the heart, because <laughs> we're going to use rotate on this one, <clears throat> which is part of our growing coolness. <clears throat> so when you originally draw it out, it really looks like this, because we have, um, we set the outside and the width and height, and then we'd use a before and after, even though before and after uses the same code after changes some. So before, we'll draw this. After draws that, <clears throat> and then we rotate them, and then we move them, we scale them, trans transform origin, and then they end up looking like a heart. Do you follow that? They're like two silos, you know, with curves, and you twist them this way, and since they're on top of each other, with the same color, they end up looking like a heart. So, so transform origin. Is it, is it, movement? it moves it, yeah. Positioning, yeah. So I think uh, this one's top to bottom, this is right to left. And, you know, top to bottom, right to left. Right, because. So I was expecting maybe in 90 degrees on part of that after. Well, because it's. Put here, right? It's re. Uh, oh, it overrides that one, sheet. right? Sorry. Right. Since this comes so whatever one, after, yeah. and it. The next one is even more crazy. <clears throat> Infinity. So what we do here is same thing. We have the outside box. This whole thing. <clears throat> and then we make two squares. Um, and then, let's see, we position absolute top left with 60 per, uh, pixels, height to 60 pixels. I don't know. I think I copied my code slightly off here. <clears throat> but then we rotated them. That's, we rotate them 45 degrees, and then we put border radius in there, and that turns them into circles. I could show you that. So if we take away uh, the radius, we got square. We take out the radius from before, we got square. <clears throat> we take away the rotate, and we take out the rotate for both of those. Boom. <clears throat> so you just rotate them, and uh, you don't have to move them in this case. <laughs> yeah. Like, Right, it just draws the box. It just, just draws the box, just gives you a position to work from. Right. right. Okay. And then uh, the other two ones are before and after, and you just want to optimize the before and after together, and then yeah. one of them. All right. And then to make things even more complicated, yin and yang. We did yin and yang. Did we, I think, did we discuss yin and yang? Did I discuss how you make it? Okay. Well, now we're going to rotate it. So on hover, 
As soon as I put my mouse on it, it will rotate. Which looks kind of, you know, <clears throat> but bam, there it is. So we need to do something to make that more smooth, right? Why 99? It could be anything you want. Oh, I probably changed it a long life. It was probably a typo. No, there wasn't anything extra there. Okay. <clears throat> so next we want to talk in, about translating things. <clears throat> so we, we want to make our Pac-Man eat the little pills, right? <clears throat> so if... I had the idea we're going to move them and then we're going to also close the mouth, sort of, sort of. <clears throat> you know, I'm just being goofy. So when you hover over him, but then, you know, he moves so the, your mouse has to sort of keep up with it. If I had a little bit more time, I would probably made little pills and did a little kind of crazy stuff. <clears throat> So now we're going to talk about transitions, and this is where it gets really cool. This is where that stuff that looks kind of janky is more smooth. So <clears throat> when there's some kind of change on your, uh, on your class, so I should have put hover or something on here, hover, hover. If something changes, you have the CSS attribute how much time, what style is it going to move? Is it linear? Is it ease out, ease in? Uh, I'll have the list of them in a second. Can you, can you stack these up in food? Can you put transition, transition, transition? You can, um, you can separate these, like background color, color, font, or something in commas. You can stack those up in different speeds and all that kind of stuff. And this is the all-encompassing. If you put all, everything that changes between before in the hover, everything that changes in the CSS will change if it's allowed to, okay? <clears throat> so that last part, the linear ease out, these are the ones you're allowed to do, use. If you want to get really crazy with the math, the cubic busier is your friend. <clears throat> I will put a link in my I'll show you. I'll show you these real quick. Um, all right. Let me show you the. the this guy did a web page, <clears throat> and it shows what these different things do, and I, uh, how how the timing is on them naturally, which is really really cool. Uh, and I'll show you why it's cool here in a second. Firebug keeps getting in my way. All right. <clears throat> so here, here is the circle doing the scaling thing. I mean, color, uh, uh, doing a color change thing over a couple seconds. Here is the circle. <clears throat> changing size when you hover over it. And you pick the time and <clears throat> here's rotating yin yang, which is a lot smoother than the other one. And I thought about it late last night, maybe I should make the rotating yin yang go really fast and then spin down the road. I, but I didn't do it, I'm sorry. Too much beer, and here's Pac-Man. <clears throat> so, what can you do that's kind of cool? I, I did the Penn State Meteorology site, and if you look at the three-bar navigation up there, and uh, you will see the three bars, they're individual, and they're gonna reorient themselves to make an X. And then 
they reorientate themselves again to make the hamburger navigation. <clears throat> also, you know, how fast the page opens and how natural it feels when it opens and shuts. So it does that, boom, it comes back. It, it's, this could be useful UI and make people feel like you're, you put some money into your work, some time and effort. <clears throat> Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, let me know. This is my contact information. I will uh, upload my all the CSS and HTML files to a Dropbox. And I'll also upload my slides somewhere. Uh, Chris, will, we, will I be able to give them all my information somewhere else? Like, can I? Uh, yeah, we can, we can make sure that that gets out. Okay. Okay. Cool. Or like and don't forget to do this. Any questions? What was that URL for that Facebook? Uh, the FBI. That's FBI.gov. Just FBI.gov. Yeah. Any other questions? And the other one is Meteor, M-E-T, I think, dot P-S-U, M-E, M-E-W-W-W-M-E-T dot P-S-U. Any other questions, anybody? Happy shape. Can you steal code? You can. Thank you. Please do. It's cool. I, I really enjoy doing it. I wanted to do some other stuff, but I was like, uh, it turned out that's all the time I really have. So. Now, I guess the other question is, how much time did you just have on your hand, just kind of being bored and playing with CSS before you came to this one? I've been doing CSS for a really, really, really long time, okay. maybe 15 years, and you know, on Twitter, I follow. Uh, if you look at who I follow, you might find some really cool. CSS gurus like Eric Meyer or um, Leah. You still put jQuery on your pages? Yeah. Okay. Because, for example, in this particular case, it does use jQuery to put a class in the body. And same with the FBI one. Okay. You know, mobiles activate it. And this page, this part of the page is, is off the canvas and then it slides over and that slides over. Um, Actually, it does it better in the FBI. Would you expect browsers to perform a little better because you're not loading, you know, yeah. K kilobytes of JavaScript? That yep. Use? Uh, CSS is really, really accepted almost everywhere. So, mm -hmm. I this all works on IE 10 and above. The some of the transition stuff doesn't work as well on IE 9, but you have to put in a, a hyphen Microsoft. I, I'd have to find the thing for you, but. It works in IE9 if you do that. But all the rest of these work without browser um, prefixes. Even the translation, I, was, I, I just find that really cool that we can do stuff like that without JavaScript. Yeah, just, just the one jQuery thing that. Not that JavaScript is horrible, but it's a little bit horrible. It's a little horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm one of those I people. Don't know. JavaScript might be easier to read. Than <laughs> I'm one, I'm one of those people that if CSS can do it, I want to do it with CSS. Absolutely. Yeah, it, 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 it makes me happy in my middle. It feels really, really clean and nice. I love them. Yeah. On the, the shapes, are they done in JSON SVG? Are they, no, there's not, they're, those aren't done with SVG at all. No. They're just drawn out with the background colors and colors of the borders. Yeah, you could do a lot of the same things with SVGs. And you can do the same transitions on Yep. Yeah, you can maybe do a lot more with them because you have different, <clears throat> you're limited to like the triangle, you're limited to certain things where SVGs you have paths that you can fill the path and have some motion and stuff like that. Could you, could you, could you imagine, how would we draw a plug logo with that? 
I, uh, <laughs> I thought about it. It's, it's almost there with yin-yang, yeah, right? Yeah, you're pretty close. Maybe, maybe I will do it before the end. And I'll do the lightning talk. Oh, now one more thing. No, I didn't do it. I won't be here for the sprints because Penn State plays Ohio State. I have to go back. <laughs> Unfortunately. Any other questions? Thank you all for coming.